Dear students, under the topic Lagrange's linear partial differential equations, here we have problem 12. The question is solve x multiplied with y minus z p plus y multiplied with z minus x q is equal to z multiplied with x minus y. When we see this, we understand that this is of the Lagrange's type. So first of all, we have to write the standard form of the Lagrange's type. The standard form is given by capital P small p plus capital Q small q is equal to capital R. So comparing this with the given equation, we see that the value of capital P is equal to x multiplied with y minus z. And the value of capital Q is equal to y multiplied with z minus x. And the value of capital R is z multiplied with x minus y. So let us take and write that here. So after writing the value of capital P, capital Q and capital R, we have to write the auxiliary equation. The auxiliary equation is given by dx by capital P is equal to dy by capital Q is equal to dz by capital R. Now we shall substitute the value of P, Q and R over here. So what we get is so we have substituted the value of p, q and r in the auxiliary equation and this is what we get. Now we shall mark this ratio as 1 and this ratio as 2 and this ratio as 3. So now we have to check whether we have to use the method of grouping or we have to use the method of multipliers. So let us differentiate them and understand it. So how to do that? We have to compare the equation. So if we compare the equation 1 and 2 that is the ratio 1 and 2. What do we observe? We see that we have x, y and z here in the denominator. But we have only dx and dy. So this cannot be separated by using the variable separable method. So the way, since the variables cannot be separated, definitely it can't be integrated easily. So we cannot make the choice of these two. In a similar way, 2 and 3 and 1 and 3 when we compare, they too have the same case. So in that case, we cannot use the method of grouping. So we understand that we have to use the method of multipliers. So by the method of multipliers, these three ratios will also be equal to another ratio LDX plus MDY plus NDZ, the whole divided by LX multiplied with that is we are multiplying L with the first ratio, M with the second ratio and N with the third ratio and we are adding them separately in the numerator and separately in the denominator. So when we multiply L with this, we get this plus M we have to multiply with this denominator in the second ratio M multiplied with Y into Z minus X plus N multiplied with Z into X minus Y. So this is what we have. So this is fourth ratio. So these three ratios will also be equal to this ratio as per the method of multipliers. Now we have to choose the multipliers L, M and N in such a way that we have to make the denominator 0. And by the rule of method of multipliers, if we are able to choose such kind of multipliers which make the denominator 0, then the numerator can be equated to 0 and easily integrated. So for that reason, first of all, we have to choose the multipliers in such a way that we have to make the denominator 0. But we need two solutions for which we need two set of multipliers. So first we shall find the first set of multipliers which makes the denominator 0. So let us see that now. So first we will choose the first set of multipliers. So to find the first set of multipliers, first we should write the denominator of fourth ratio that is what is that it is l x multiplied with y minus z plus m y multiplied with z minus x plus n z multiplied with x minus y now we are trying to make this as zero as a whole so in order to do that we have to choose the values for l m and n so that this completely becomes zero so what can we choose the values as? So this has to be done 
by trial and error method only that is we have to select values for l m and n so that if we substitute those values this completely becomes zero so how can we choose now if you see if we put l equal to 1 m equal to 1 and n equal to 1 this denominator may become zero so let us put l is equal to 1 m is equal to 1 and n equal to 1 in this so so when we substitute these values what we get is so if we put l equal to 1 in denominator what we get is x multiplied with y minus z plus now m equal to 1 so y multiplied with z minus x plus if we put n equal to 1 you get z multiplied with x minus y so now let us simplify this so we get xy minus x z plus y z minus y x and then plus z x minus z y so we see that x y and negative x y gets cancelled similarly x z and z, z x that is this is negative this is positive and y z and z y both are same so this is positive this is negative and it gets cancelled and this is equal to 0 so let us mark this as 1 and we see that when we choose the multipliers as l equal to 1 m equal to 1 and n equal to 1 we get the denominator to be equal to 0 so therefore the first set of multipliers l m n is equal to 1 1 1 so let us write that so this is the first set of multipliers now simultaneously we will also find the second set of multipliers and then we will substitute that so the second set of multipliers we have to find now so we have to find the second set of multipliers so we have taken and written the denominator from the fourth ratio now we have to choose the values of l m n another set of values other than 1 1 1 1 which makes this zero so what value can we think of if we think of x y and z so when we substitute here it becomes already there is an x so when x is multiplied it becomes x square so this here you will have similarly already y is there if you substitute y it will become y square and here also you will get z square and on simplification we cannot make it zero so we cannot choose the multipliers as x y z so what can we think of the next set of multipliers now if you see here we have x here we have y and here we have z so if we choose the multipliers as 1 by x 1 by y and 1 by z they may easily cancel so once they get cancelled and whatever is there in the bracket will be added up and easily you can make it zero so we are going to choose the multipliers as l is equal to 1 by x and then m equal to 1 by y and n is equal to 1 by z so therefore put these values as multipliers so if we do so what will happen to the denominator is so when this is 1 by x so 1 by x multiplied with x multiplied with y minus z plus what is m 1 by y multiplied with y multiplied with z minus x plus what is n 1 by z so z multiplied with x minus y so x minus y so this is what we get now if you see this x and x gets cancelled y and y z and z can be cancelled and what we will have y minus z here and then plus here you have z minus x plus x minus y so this is what we have so y and minus y gets cancelled minus z plus z gets cancelled minus x plus x gets cancelled and this is equal to 0 let's mark it as 2 now therefore since this becomes 0 the second set of multipliers that we are going to choose is 1 by x 1 by y and 1 by z so let us write that so therefore these are the second set of multipliers and these are the first set of multipliers and using this multipliers we will get the first solution u and using these multipliers we will be obtaining the second solution v so let us see how to obtain the solutions u and v using the multipliers so in order to find the solution u and v first we have taken and written the ratio 4 so this is ratio 4 now in this ratio as per the rule of method of multipliers if we make the denominator as 0 we can equate the numerator also as 0 for that only we have found the multipliers so first we shall choose the first set of multipliers that we have found and let us solve it 
so what are, what are the first set of multipliers it is 1 1 and 1 so we are going to choose it choose the first set of multipliers now and so what will happen to 4 in 4 if you substitute the value of l m and n the numerator will be if you substitute l equal to 1 you will have only dx similarly m equal to 1 will give dy plus n equal to 1 will give us dz so this is the numerator divided by we saw that the denominator was 0 when we chose the multipliers as 1 1 1 so the denominator will be 0 this is from there we have marked it as 1 so you can check it so this is from 1 so the denominator has become 0 so by the method of multipliers if this is 0 then we can equate dx the plus dy plus d is that that is the numerator as 0 now let us integrate on both the sides so on integrating both the sides what do you get the integral of dx is x plus the integral of dy is y plus the integral of d is z is z is equal to a c1 which is a constant of integration and this gives us the first solution u so therefore the first solution u is equal to i'll write here u is equal to x plus y plus z so this is the first solution u in a same manner by choosing the second set of multipliers we have to find the second solution v so now we are choosing the second set of multipliers 1 by x 1 by y and 1 by z so what will happen to 4 so when you substitute these values of l m and n in fourth ratio this so it will give us so here at the place of l we are going to substitute 1 by x here 1 by y and here 1 by z so what will be the numerator it will be 1 by x dx plus 1 by y dy plus 1 by z dz the whole divided by what will happen to the denominator we saw that it was equal to 0 when we chose this these multipliers so the denominator will be 0 this is from 2 so kindly refer this in order to see that the denominator is 0 in this case so if the denominator is 0 then by using the method of multipliers we obtain the numerator to be equal to 0 so 1 by x dx plus 1 by y dy plus 1 by z dz will be equal to 0 now integrating on both the sides what do you get so we when we integrate well, integral of dx by x will be log x plus the integral of 1 by y dy is log y plus the integral of 1 by z dz is log z which is equal to a constant of integration which will be in log c2 okay so now by using the rule log a plus log b plus log c can be written as log of a b c so by using the rule the, uh, of logarithm we can write this as log of x y z is equal to log c2 so from this we see that the value of c2 will be equal to x y z so x y z is equal to c2 and this will give us the second solution v so therefore the second solution v is given by v is equal to x y z so this is the second solution v therefore the general solution phi of u comma v is equal to 0 will be phi of what is u u is equal to x plus y plus z this is the first solution so let me substitute that so phi of x plus y plus z comma the second solution v is here x y z so x y z is equal to 0 so therefore we have obtained the general solution of the given Lagrange's partial differential equation by using the method of multipliers so hope you have understood this problem this is a very significant problem thank you